Tommy, you good? Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to another of our legal clinics with Arthur Bergeron. Um, today, um, we're, our topic is going to be Living Where You Want, Part 1, Understanding Assisted Living. The second part is going to be next month. So um, there is there are handouts that are currently uh, at the tables. Um, and there are refreshments. And without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Arthur back with us again. Joyce, thank, thank you, you so much. And uh, you're gonna love this. Oh yes, <laughs> it's quite an uh, interesting topic. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hi, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, thank you for the next installment of the, our uh, legal clinic series. Uh, that we do here at Oak in, uh, at, in Tisbury. Um, Joyce has been kind enough to be inviting us back for like six years now, I want to say, right? Every time it gets harder to come back, you know, a day like today, I go like, oh boy, it's so sad I have to come to Martha's Vineyard today. Which is, which is also, I know, what my friend Patty Survey said. Pa Patty is, um, I asked Patty to come because one of the things we're going to talk about today, or we're going to focus on today, is on assisted living and also, by the way, on, on living at home if you are homebound. Um, and if you are eligible for the veterans benefit uh, and, the, and the way in which that can be such an important part in terms of figuring out all of those things, right? Um, and Patty, uh, oftentimes, you know, we'll, 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 when I have a kind of issue that I need to really look for somebody else's advice on, I'll, you know, give people three names and say, go talk to all these people. But I really, when I'm talking about the veterans benefit, there's really only one person, it's Patty Surveys. She's actually... I, got to, I heard about her from several other lawyers who kept on saying, oh, no, 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 I, do, I deal with Patty Surveys, I deal with Patty Surveys. So finally I gave her a call, and I said, so, so Patty, I said, could we get together sometime? She said, sure. I said, where, well, where do you live? She said, oh, I live in Marlboro, and that's where I live, right? I said, oh, well, that's convenient, right? Her, her business is right next door in Sudbury. So we're going to talk a lot about that issue today. We're going to talk about, of course, our good friends Frank and Mary. Um, and by the way, Brenda Costa, Brenda, who's my paralegal, who's here, is. Do we have the the uh, the YouTube reference on here? Yeah. Also. Yeah. yeah. See, Brenda is wearing a Frank and Mary T-shirt. We actually walked in the Alzheimer's walk yesterday, right? And the back of the T-shirt says "Follow us on Frank and Mary." Uh, what we've done for people who want to see some of these presentations um, is we actually now have a YouTube channel. And we have, we have, have um, downloaded a number of our present, or uploaded a number of our presentations to the YouTube channel. So if there are particular issues, elder law issues that you are concerned about, you can go to the YouTube channel now. There are 40 of them that we've uploaded, and we've done it in segments. So anyway, it's kind of just kind of an, another feature. So we're talking today about Frank and Mary, and you know, Frank and Mary have different, are in different situations sometimes depending on the topic, but today, Frank and Mary's house is worth about four hundred thousand dollars. You've seen them before. You know they're they're married. All their kids are grown up. For, you know Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. They've got a house at, worth four hundred thousand dollars. They have an IRA worth one hundred and fifty. An annuity worth a hundred. Um, cash worth seventy five. And all they want to do is stay home and be buried in the backyard. And when one dies, they want to leave everything to the other one. And when they're both dead, they want to leave the stuff to Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And that's their goal. Uh, Frank, er, Frank is getting is very got a very generous uh, social security. He's getting two thousand dollars a month in social security, and he's getting a pension of five hundred dollars a month. So his income is twenty five hundred, and Mary is getting uh, social security of a thousand a month. So they have pretty good income. 
Um, but once again, I think that even their incomes will apply to you and their asset situation will. And of course, Mary's big goal is, right, even though she's getting older and it's hard a little bit to get around the house, she says, oh, I'm not ready to go to a nursing home, right? I'm never going to a nursing home. And, and, you, and, I, don't, and I don't blame her. And one of the things, though, that Mary needs to understand is what assisted living is, which is not a nursing home. Uh, it is not certified as a nursing home. It doesn't have skilled nursing services there all the time, right? But it may be a place where Mary or Frank want to go if there is a point at which they are still independent and can maintain, maintain their independence, um, but only if they're in an environment that is a little safer than what home can provide. Because there may be a point where Frank and Mary living at home, it's not safe. And it's just not a good idea. Maybe not for both of them, maybe for one of them. But it may be, too, that an assisted living um, facility is a, is, a, is a safer place for Frank to be taking care of Mary if Mary signs a slip a little bit, right? Or for Mary to be taking care of Frank. It just may be a safer place. Um, now, there, there are, you probably know there are three assisted or, or three facilities here on Martha's Vineyard that are certified with the, with the Department of Elder Services as assisted livings. One of them is the Henrietta Brewer House here in Vineyard Haven. One of them is Long Hill in Egertown. And I am told that at Windermere, there is actually a wing which is an assisted living wing. I know that there's a nursing home component, but there's also, and I'm seeing a nod, that that's, that's, I haven't seen that, right? So for, for all three of those facilities, this, these, are, these, is, these, are rel these are relevant things. These are places that, once again, are not nursing homes. They do not have skilled nursing 24 hours a day. And therefore, I know we've spoken here a lot about mass health and about qualifying for mass health and how you do it and blah, blah, blah. And every day, literally, someone, including today, somebody emailed me and said, oh, by the way, you know, does mass health cover assisted living? The answer is every day, no, 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 no. It only covers, but it does not cover assisted living. It only covers certified places that are certified as having 24-hour a day nursing home care. So assisted living, what is that exactly? And you may know. So it's housing, right? Uh, but it's kind of housing plus. It's housing for which you are typically paying a monthly fee, but that fee doesn't just, isn't just rent. It doesn't just include rent. Uh, it includes support services. So maybe Mary is just getting tired of making the bed like every morning, you know, or washing the dishes all the time, right? Or cooking. Maybe she doesn't want to be cooking all the time. Or maybe she's, you know, not remembering too well right anymore. So Frank's a little worried about having Mary cook because, like, is the stove going to get shut off, you know? But probably the most dangerous thing in a, in a house of the folks who are my clients is the stove, right? It's the one thing that can kind of, like, eliminate everybody. So um, it may provide some, some, supportive ser some supportive services. Typically, when you go in, you're signing an individualized service plan. And so the services that you're getting vary. Typically, those costs vary along with the service plan, right? And, and, can be, and, and you want to be careful about that because there are some of these places that are very a la carte. So, you know, when you, you, you think you're getting a, you know, five, four, four thousand dollars a month but all of a sudden you get your first bill and it's got all this other stuff, you know, for making the bed and doing this. So you need to be careful about that. But you, so you need to read the plan. Uh, typically they, all, they cover all the meals, um, although not all. Typically there is a lifeline service there so that, you know, the worst thing when you're Frank and Mary is if you do have a problem and somebody falls and can't get up and the fire truck comes and the police, the ambulance comes and the police and you're like, God, this is so embarrassing, right? Well, most of these places, that, that's kind of built in, that if there is an emergency, you can, you can call quickly and somebody shows up, and it isn't like this big deal. So it provides independence, it provides housekeeping. It's a transition. Um, but I say that it's a transition. I, I've asked folks that run assisted living facilities. So how many of your folks, um, having come to assisted living, end up going to the dreaded place, right, to the nursing home? Um, and the answer is typically about 50%, right? But what that really means is that 50% don't. 50% of the folks end up being able to live the rest of their lives independently in an assisted living facility, right? Which is not, a, which is not as good as being at home, right, but not bad. Typically, though, the big, I'm just going to skip over those, the big issue um, is cost. 
right? Because the assisted living facilities can be three thousand, four thousand, five, six thousand dollars a month. It can be a lot of money. Now, if you're Frank and Mary, right? Um, you've got thirty-five hundred dollars a month in income. Now, one thing about assisted living is when you get there, typically your other expenses just go way down. I always try to emphasize that to clients. You know, guess what? I know you're just making it on, on what you're making, but you know your food bill is going to go way down at the assisted living facility, and you're not paying the gas anymore, the electric, or a lot of other stuff. So the bill does go down, um, but still there's typically a gap. And if you're Frank and Mary, recall they've got about three hundred thousand, a little more than three hundred thousand dollars in other assets, and they got this house which is paid for, right? So they know they can manage when they're at home. If they've got three hundred thousand in, in in assets and they've got thirty five hundred dollars a month in income and the assisted living is sixty five hundred a month, right? There's three thousand dollars a month that they've got to be paying to the assisted living. Now, if they've got three three hundred thousand dollars in extra assets, that means they can be in assisted living for a long time, like ten years, right? And they can also borrow against their house. But the point is still. If you're, you know, if you're Frank and Mary, your biggest concern, no, not your biggest concern, but one of your biggest concerns is you don't want to go broke, right? You do not want to run out of money and not be dead yet, right? I mean, you know, I mean, once again, as I've said often, the thing about being, the thing about doing elder law is that folks that I deal with get the fact that they're going to die. And in many cases, you know, that's certainly scary, but not as scary as being frail, being out of control, or being broke. Being broke. So you don't want to be there. So that's the reason why uh, I asked Patty uh, to come down, because um, a lot of the people who are in, um, um, in assisted living facilities, I had thought it was about 25%. Patty had told me that based on the information that she has, it's closer to 80% of people in assisted living facilities are taking advantage of the veterans benefit. That's how they're affording it, right? It's a huge, huge percentage. Um, so I wanted Patty to talk to you about that, to talk about the veterans benefit, to talk about how you would qualify for it if you're in assisted living facility, and then also to take the time to talk about how you would qualify for it if you're not going to assisted living, but you were, but you were at home. The reason for that is in many communities, we are doing that, that particular piece and having Patty come twice. Tough to get, get them all the way down to the vineyard twice, though. You know? And, it, and I, it's easy in September, but it's going to be harder in November, right? So she's going to be covering that piece also. So, Patty Surveys. Thank you very much.